Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on engineering science N1. Uh, in this platform, we shall be working on heat from the question paper of uh, November 2022, uh, focusing on heat. We have got question number eight, uh, which is on 8.1, quickly rush, uh, rushing through the questions. We are given uh, to give two advantages of a mercury uh, thermometer. Okay, just two advantages. So there are so many advantages that we have. I'm just going to show you uh, one or two that you're going to choose from uh, so that you can just work with these ones. Okay, so we are given there that it responds quickly to temperature changes. Okay, if there is any temperature change, it responds quickly. Okay, uh, the other part does not adhere to, to the glass. All right, it is clearly visible. It has got high boiling point it expands evenly. It is a good conductor of, of heat. So these are the advantages that we could have taken uh, just any two there. So this is just any two of your choice. All right, let's see that a part of the question uh, that we were given. All right, that is uh, question 8.2. On 8.2, we are given that here there is a K2 which contains 2.75 kgs of water okay so here we have got the mass of water so i'm just going to write it like this mass of water that is 2,75 kgs at a temperature of so this is an initial temperature which is t1 of 22 degrees celsius okay in johannesburg the water boils at 91 degrees celsius so this is the second temperature which is a boiling temperature of 91 degrees Celsius. And a specific heat capacity of water, we are given the specific heat capacity of water as 4187 joules per kg degree Celsius. Okay, 8.21, calculate the difference in temperature. Okay, take note that the change in temperature, that is the difference in temperature is simply T2 minus T1. So T2 is our boiling, uh, the, the boiling temperature here at 91, which is 91 degrees Celsius minus T1, the initial temperature, which was at 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's how you simplify this one. So if you were to subtract, you're going to obtain 69 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's one mark for that, okay? 8.22, the change in the heat, uh, calculate the heat energy. All right, so that's calculate the heat energy required for the temperature rise, okay? So take note that for you to have uh, the heat here or the change in heat, we know that Q is equivalent to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. You are also given this formula, okay? So that means we are going to take our mass in kgs, which is 2,75 kgs, times the specific heat capacity in joules uh, per kg, degree Celsius, which is 4187, times the change in temperature. Take note, we calculated the change in temperature in question 8.21, and we got 69. So you are going to just multiply by 69. Okay, so that's you guys and your calculator. Make sure that you use your calculator properly. You are going to obtain something like 794, uh, four again, that's four, eight, three, comma, two, five, if you multiply properly from your calculator. Okay, so this is energy, which is measured in, in joules. Okay, so you can leave your answer in joules. If you want to convert to kilojoules, you divide by 1,000, and this is going to be seven, nine, four, comma, that's a comma here, which means you remain with one, two, three, which is four, eight, three. These two cannot round off. So it is going to be kilojoules like that. Okay, so that is what we're going to have as our final answer if you are to use this in kilojoules like I said. Okay, let's check 8.3, All right? I can just remove this for the meantime. On 8.3, we are given to explain the working principle of a bimetallic strip. Okay, and that is two marks for that. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, here what we have as uh, the working principle. Okay, let me just show you the screen. So we are given the working principle that the linear expansion or rate of materials 
are no are not the same that are, are not the same not the same here so take note guys okay they are not the same in a bimetallic strip two metals with a different rate of expansion are joined together so remember you'll be given different temperature t1 and t2 then if the strip is heated the metal with the fastest expansion rate will bend the strip to the side of the metal with a lower expansion rate. Okay, so this is the good explanation that is gonna get you two marks for that. I think it's clear uh, as we can see. All right, let's see the other part of the question uh, that is on question 8.4. So 8.4, we are now given here. All right, so this is 8.4. An aluminum conductor with a length of uh, 135 meters. So we're given the, 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 the length of the conductor, which is aluminum. That's 135 meters. The temperature at, the temperature is at 18 degrees Celsius. That is the initial temperature, which is T1. Then it rises to 36. So that is the second temperature, T2, at 36 degrees Celsius. The length of the cable is increased by, take note, we are given the change in length, which is 12,6 uh, millimeters. So to convert to meters, remember millimeters, milli means times 10 to the exponent of negative three. So you multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative three, which is going to be 0, uh, 0,126 if you multiply properly in meters. So the question on 8.41 was to calculate the difference in temperature with our uh, guys, this is a repetition. We talked about this here on question uh, 8.21, calculate the difference in temperature, that's T2 minus T1. So it's the same thing here. We are going to have this as T2 minus T1. Okay, so that is the change in temperature. So T2, that is uh, 36, T1, 18. So it's going to be 36 minus 18 and that is going to give us 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, 8.42, calculate the final length. If you are to check in your formula sheet, you are given this formula for the final length. The final length is equivalent to the original length plus the change in the length or the change in the length plus the original length of the conductor. So the original length is the one that you are given, which is the length of what the aluminum cable of 135. So that is going to give us the final length. So the original length at 135 meters plus the change in length, which is this one. Take note in meters, not millimeters. So it is 0, 0,0126 to meters. So you are adding meters versus meters. So your answer is going to be also in meters, okay? So if you add properly, you're going to obtain 135,0126 meters. Okay, so that was the answer for this one. Uh, then on uh, 8.5, we are now asked to explain the working principle of a thermocouple. That's two marks, okay? So a thermocouple, we can have our explanation in this manner, all right? So let me just show here. That's a thermocouple here. So a thermocouple, it consists of two different metals joined electrically on one on the one side. If heat is applied to one side, the difference in the potential will form because of the difference in conductivity. This potential difference can be measured by a galvanometer. So take note on another part, they can ask you to draw or to sketch this thermocouple, but this one was an explanation. So simply two marks for that. I think it was uh, easy and the, I don't know, just, just have to revise guys. Okay, let's see uh, on the other part of the question. So this was question 8.5, then uh, we have still another part. Okay, 8.7, uh, 8.6, we are given to explain how heat is propagated in each of the following metals. Okay, how is heat proper Get it. Okay, so if you are given a steel, how is it uh, transmitted here? So if you are dealing with a steel, that's uh, it's steel, it conducts. So it's a conduction. Okay, uh, so this one is conduction. For water, uh, to pass it from one point to another is by convection. So this is by 
conviction, okay? So guys, please make sure that you just read the notes, okay? It's gonna help us as we are moving on, on. okay? Question 8.7, we are given, give one example in which, in each of the following effects that heat can have on different metals, okay? What is the effect, okay? The change in color, okay? What is an example that can happen for a change in color, okay? Uh, the change in color can happen if you heat a steel, okay? If you heat a steel, uh, we can have a change in color. So you can write heat of what? Heat of steel, according to our syllabus. That's what they want you to do, okay? Then the change in phase. So a change in phase can be uh, of ice changing uh, changing to, 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 to water or water changing to ice, something like that, okay? So we can have... Uh, the change in phase of ice uh, changing to water or ice changes to water. All right. And this change whereby we are saying the ice changes to water, uh, it's a vapor. Okay. So the if ice changes to water, that's actually a vapor. Okay. This is ice back to water. Okay. So the, 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 the opposite actually if you are given uh, water changing to ice, it can be like this, water changes to ice, all right, like this. So we can take either from this uh, change, change that we have, okay? So I think everything uh, is actually uh, clear. Once we put water there, then it evaporates, something like that. Uh, then the, the opposite for the water to the ice, so the question was just an example. You just choose any example, guys. Okay. There are so many examples that you can pick, but which one is best for you, okay? So according to your syllabus, uh, these are some of the examples that you might need or you might have to use. Okay, so that's what we had, guys, on heat from question paper of November 2022. Uh, we shall meet again in another class as we uh, revise past exam papers.